So there's an interesting argument going on right now within the African-American community, and it's one that's gone on before. Can you separate art from the artist? Case in point, talking about Kanye West in this instance. If you've been watching the news, you've seen his rather erratic behavior going from uh, just weird, mentally touched, to downright dangerous. So it started... Uh, Actually, it started a long time ago, and I'll get more into that in a second. But just to recap, uh, his anti-Semitic remarks have caused him to lose business relationships with a lot of people. He lost, just in one day, something like $2 billion. And just recently, he had dinner with two uh, well-known racists, one being the former president of the United States, and the other being a, um, I'm not even going to mention his name. Well, let's just call him a boil on the ass of humanity. Well, no, that would that would also describe Trump. But anyway, um, his racism, his anti-blackness, his continued spiral of self-destruction is having some people have those conversations about. Kanye West being canceled. Well, he's already lost, like I said, several business relationships, so that's a done deal. He's lost millions of dollars, a couple of billion, like I said. Uh, ordered to pay his ex-wife, Kim Kardashian, something like $200,000 a month in maintenance and child support. And as those business relationships fall off, he is getting embraced uh, by the worst elements of society. Racists, anti-Semites, bigots, and the Republican Party. And so the question for those of us in the media becomes, do we separate the art from the artist? In my case, the answer is yes, an emphatic yes. So for those that don't know, I am the vice president of programming for a small group here in Louisville called Aircom Media. We own a handful of radio stations and some TV stations. And a couple of weeks ago, I went about the business of removing Kanye West from our playlist. Uh, this isn't the first time that I've done something like this. Several years ago, when R. Kelly's legal problems were starting to come to light, I made the decision to remove him from our playlists. And I was further vindicated when other radio stations across the country followed suit. However... Audiences were like, well, just because he did these things, and, and we're talking about West and R. Kelly, uh, doesn't mean that, you know, you have to stop playing the music. And I would counter that by saying that um, radio stations are granted a license to serve the public interest and the public trust. For black radio, that takes on a special meaning because representation and you've heard this before, is extremely important. How we are perceived and how we are seen in the media is very important. Because unless we project our true selves, the right image of ourselves, unless we prevent those from damaging what is collectively our brand, we're going to continue to be hemmed up by stereotypes. And so, because as a black radio station, one that is over 70 years old, we cannot allow Kanye West damaging of his brand to damage ours. WLOU is steeped in tradition when it comes to civil rights, when it comes to service to the black community. What Kanye West has done serves neither purpose. Radio in and of itself, black radio especially, has a more important role than any one artist. So when you revoke your own black card, as Kanye has, it's a no-brainer that you have to dump him. There are going to be listeners that don't agree with that, and I've had conversations with them, but I stand fast in my decision to do this. We are about classic soul. And there are a few songs of Kanye's that fall into that category, okay? However... The overall image of WLOU, the overall image of black radio in general, can't be sacrificed for 
one man. We as black people are far too forgiving at times when it comes to our celebrities. In Kanye West's case, when his mother died several years ago, there were those of us in the radio and records community that knew him or knew his people. We reached out to him and wanted to offer our help and our support. Some of us even suggested that he take some time away from the limelight in order to grieve the loss of his mother. He chose not to do that. And because of that, through a series of bad decisions and bad moves and public screw-ups, you're seeing Kanye West continue a downward spiral. Issues of mental health have come into play. They've been talked about. They've been talked about for years, okay? Even by West himself. And for the longest time, there are people like me that have been sympathetic and empathetic to his plight. Because maybe we have dealt with some sort of some sort of, of mental illness ourselves with somebody that we know. However, personally, it's getting hard to have any empathy for West in any way, shape, or form. If there are mental issues at play, and I strongly believe that there are, his refusal to get help is on him. Everything that is happening to him right now, this continued downward spiral, is all on him. You can't blame the record labels. You can't blame the people in his orbit. These are choices that he made. He lost me when he said that slavery was a choice. And so you've got people that are defending him simply because of what he said about Jewish people. And they tend to agree with that. So they don't see anything wrong with what he said. However, when you continue to do damage to the image of black people, there has to be a line drawn in the sand. There has to be somebody that says enough is enough. Aircom Media has pretty much done that with Kanye West. I strongly suspect as more fallout happens because of the relationships that he's chosen to form, he wants to be a champion for white supremacy. I suspect that more and more radio stations will follow suit, that Kanye West will no longer be a fixture of their playlists. And, you know, it's, it's a shame because before all of his problems there are those that would have regarded him as a genius just by looking at his body of work. However, West started believing his own hype. He called himself a genius. That's a red flag. And so, people will continue to argue. I know I will get pushed back. I already have uh, regarding our decision to drop West from our playlist. And deeper discussions need to be had on a general level. Can you separate art from the artist? In my personal opinion, you can. You have to. There's a history of it. Old Hollywood used to have what was called a morals clause in their contracts for their movie stars. If they did anything the studio saw as out of line, they would be dropped. Motown Records had something similar back in the day. When they took all of their artists through boot camp, there was a code of behavior that was expected and followed if you wanted to remain on Barry Gordy's Motown label. Unfortunately, that no longer exists with most, if not all, record labels or promotion companies because it's more about the bottom line than it is the health or the well-being of the individual that's making the money for those companies. However, the artist bears responsibility in the choices that they make. And so 
Kanye West has been revoked, canceled, as far as I'm concerned. And this may not make any difference to him, which isn't the point. He will continue to self-destruct. And we'll just have to see what happens from there. 